call to order the April 2014 meeting of the Media Borough Council. I guess for all uh, for all the sustain and uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You won't be here tonight. Um, we'll go through a few housekeeping matters first and uh, then we'll get to public comment to put it on the floor. So we have a couple sets of agenda of meeting minutes, one for our March workshop meeting, uh, workshop meeting, I apologize, and the other for our March council meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for the March 6, 2014 workshop meeting? Mr. President, I make a motion to approve them. Workshop meeting dated March 6, 2014, as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the March 6, 2014, workshop meeting minutes, please say aye. aye. Yes. Aye. The motion passes. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Is there any days? I didn't hear any yet. There is none. Um, motion passes unanimously. All right, do I hear a motion to approve the council meeting minutes for March 20, 2014? Mr. President, make a motion to approve the council meeting council meeting minutes of March 20, 2014, as submitted. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? There is not a public question. All those who favor approving the March 20, 2014 meeting minutes as submitted, please say aye. Aye. Yes. aye. Those opposed, please say aye. The motion passes unanimously. Um, for those of you who are home, we might be a little bit tongue-tied uh, early in this meeting. We just had a session where our photographs were taken. Well, one to us probably. But as a result, our mouths are kind of frozen in place, <laughs> smiling for about 15 minutes. Um, it is my duty to announce that we did hold executive session on uh, April 3rd. Uh, we discussed the personnel matter. We also discussed the litigation matter. Uh, those. For those uh, housekeeping matters out of the way, it is now time for public comment and privilege of the floor. Is there anybody here who is present who would like to address council? If so, please come to the microphone, identify yourself <coughs> and where you live, and say what you want to say. Thank you. Um, I'm Shari Stuber from Springfield, Pennsylvania, Delaware County, and I'm here representing Transition Town Media. Can you hear me? This doesn't sound like it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Dave, is the microphone on? Thank you. We can hear you. Okay. Um, so I'm here representing Transition Town Media with my colleague Jody Carley. And um, I'd like to just uh, to let you all know about uh, the Happiness Week initiative that we're that's starting next Tuesday on Earth Day, April 22nd. Um, as you probably know by now, Transition Town Media is a grassroots, all-volunteer, nonprofit organization that's dedicated to Sorry. It's dedicated to making our town more resilient in difficult times by strengthening our community spirit, supporting local economies, and making stronger connections between neighbors. So we decided to launch um, Happiness Week to draw attention to the idea that um, a community's strength has more to do with its happiness and well-being than its finances. So we partnered with um, uh, several other organizations, as we often do, um, to put on a week-long celebration and ex exploration of what makes us happy. I'd like to acknowledge some of those um, organizations now, if I may. Um, these are organizations that are partnering with us on Happiness Week. The American Fair Tra uh, First Fair Trade Town Committee, Media Business Authority, the Media for Providence Library, Tyler Arboretum, Red Hill Farm, the Surrey Senior Center at, at Media Fellowship House, the Media Little League, Media Friends Meeting, Providence Friends Meeting, First United Methodist Church, Second Baptist Church, Friends of Glen Providence Park, the Media Elementary School, Walden School, School at Rose Valley, Springfield Healthplex, Enso Yoga, Salsa in the Suburbs, Seven Stones, Earth and State, and 15 other businesses and media, Fabian Barber Incorporated, Joni Carly Consulting, Shamlian Advertising, Market Acumen, 
and of course, Media Borough Council. Um, as you may recall, in the, in the March meeting, Mayor uh, McMahon uh, generously announced that a proclamation that um, April 22nd through 27th is Happiness Week. And I'd like my colleague now, uh, Joni Carley, to give you a rundown of some of the events that we're going to be that are, will be taking place. And I have some brochures uh, that I'd like to hand out to Council if you would uh, like to have them while she's doing that. Thank you. So I'm going to start with a little correction with my colleague here. Um, happiness, it doesn't only have more, it's not that it has more to do with economics. What we know from data from all over the world, from organizations and countries, is that happiness has everything to do with economic viability and stability. And this is not fluffy stuff. We're actually going to have a talk on this on Wednesday night, the kind of wonky side of happiness, where the, the data is in on this. And we have a URL where we're using a tool that's been used, uh, it's adapted from a tool used in Bhutan, They've been measuring gross national happiness for years. And we have our own uh, URL for that, so we can actually measure media on 11 indicators of happiness and well-being. And those have everything to do with economic viability. So that's what stands behind this. I'll be doing that with James Quilligan, who's an expert on international policy in the Commons. Uh, so the other things that we're doing are uh, the flash mob. The uh, Healthplex is actually sponsoring a flash mob. And if you're on State Street at 6 o'clock-ish, on Friday night, just be prepared. It's going to be fun. So we hope to see you there. And if you really want to join it, there's choreography online. And it's real easy. So we're expecting quite a few people for that. And um, Saturday, we have a wonderful show at 2 o'clock. We have some great musicians. The Happiness Singers are rehearsing as we speak. They'll be singing. And um, we also have a scavenger hunt. There are 15 businesses in the library that are having people come in and get uh, scavenger things, and then there are prizes from local businesses. And there's also a bake-off. Fair Trade is doing a bake-off, so people have to use at least two Fair Trade items in the, the baking contest, and, and uh, so it'll be good eating, too. Um, on Tuesday, we invite everyone in the community to come break bread together and just be neighbors to F Potluck. And there's going to be games out, and it's going to be just fun, and a good way for a community of communities to come together. Uh, Wednesday is the happiness talk, and if you're, if, if you're a civics person, if you're into the wonky stuff, I really invite you to come to the community room and, and be with James and I on Wednesday. Thursday, we're doing the happy documentary by Tom Shajak, who produced a lot of the Jim Carrey movies, and a uh, great producer, really looking at um, what does happiness mean in the world, and, and how do we, uh, why is it important. So that's pretty much our week, and we really hope, uh, on that you'll see the link to do the measurement, and we really hope you participate and go online and, and get your data in the pool. So thank you. If uh, someone wished to look up the calendar events, where would they go? There's a link on the brochure. Is that the go to transitiontownmedia.org. Transitiontownmedia.org. One and, word. And if, One some, word. if someone wanted to participate in that choir, Oh, well, there's one more rehearsal day yeah, for today. One more rehearsal. Oh, and this is, um, look downtown, you're going to see these flags in the different windows. This is the different merchants that are, um, they won't all look like this, they're all different, but you know, this idea. So when you see this, this is a merchant that's participating in the scavenger hunt and, and been part of uh, the this week. So well, the this is the first rehearsal. annual and uh, to be talking with you next year about this. The last rehearsal is what, Monday? Monday night. And all the parts are online and they're very easy and very fun. So come sing and come dance and come, come pop up and listen. Well, we look forward to a successful event and uh, let the record reflect that media is pro happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, is there anybody else who wishes to address council at this time? No other calls uh, to stand at the microphone. Um, uh, we'll take the moment here to welcome <coughs> spring officially. I know that last month, uh, Councilman Robinson said a few words about spring finally arriving, but I think it's finally arrived. Don't know about that. I've seen some flowers out there, so I think it, it has arrived. Finally has arrived. It's, it's okay. Um, we will now move into uh, the reports. We have the engineer's report, Mr. Johnson. Uh, good evening. Uh, engineer's report for March 2014. The Temporary repair of the barrel field manhole was completed. Uh, we are looking for September, October to do the permanent repair of the manhole once the ball field activities are completed. And this was working in uh, coordination with the Rose Tree Media School District and the Borough of Media. We presented eighth and all of some schematic stormwater improvements, which we're still back 
trying to find uh, some, I'll use the word, uh, temporary, more temporary type items of repair to see if we can do some improvements down there. Uh, road resurfacing, we have been in contact with PICO to get our 2014 road program approved. With PICO, they have a new municipal service person at PICO, which we're dealing with. We had previously sent the information to one person. Uh, that person's gone. We have a new person, so we are uh, pushing them along, getting things uh, submitted and approved to get this road program out to bid. Uh, various meetings we attended. Uh, we also did prepare and transmit uh, a review letter for the media of the Providence Library. Uh, we did receive the Olive Street uh, parking garage bids, and we did have a meeting with Hooven Park with the landscape designer. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Johnson? He's waiting with bated breath. Excellent. Uh, there are no questions for the engineer, so we move to our always loquacious solicitor. <laughs> uh, thank you. I don't have anything to report. This evening. Are there any questions for Mr. Scott? I have a question. Okay. So there's been discussion about the Allen Street parking garage project and how it's going to be paid for. Um, the question I have for you is, if we decide to vote on a project tonight and bid amount which is beyond, you know, say it's around $850,000, we need to determine how we're going to finance that now. So if we wanted to finance that with a bond, do we need to have a resolution which indicates that when we approve the bid? You need to um, you need to do something before you spend the money. I don't think approving the project oh. is the trigger. It's the spending of the money that does. I see. So uh, we talked at, I believe, work session about giving an advanced, uh, an advanced funding resolution, okay. which is where you if this, this is important. It's not working. Uh, where you would, uh, you, you could spend money out of a particular account and um, you could then, when you get the bond proceeds, replenish that account with the bond proceeds. But there's no reason that we would defer tonight's, uh, a vote tonight for any reason to, based on that fence, whether we could finance it with bond money or other, other sources. Uh, that's up to you as to whether you want to. Right, I'm just asking, is there no, I, I don't think you have to defer based on, I mean, I don't claim that the, 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 the balances of the, of the various accounts. Sure. Are, but um, I don't think, I think that it is something you can uh, figure out after the fact. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Scott? Hearing no call for further question, we'll move to the mayor's report. Uh, thank you. I'm going to do two resolutions first, uh, because I know we have people here for one of them. But first I'm going to read, uh, uh, Arbor Day is next next week, 25th, if my math is correct. Um, <clears throat> whereas in 1972, Sterling Ward proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And this uh, holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. It is now observed throughout the nation. Um, there are several more lines, but the bottom line is our Arbor Day is next Friday, the 25th. And Amy, we usually plant a tree around 10 o'clock in the morning on the Arbor Day. So that's Friday, Jeff. So I guess Ralph, you and I, and Amy, if you're available, um, I think the location is still to be named. Correct. So, uh, so it's one more tree in medium, although I'm sure lots of others may be planted, but that's, that's next Friday, the 25th. So uh, anyone that has an interest, please let us know. And this I'm going to go up to the microphone, and Karen Rapino is here. So, uh, Karen, I'm going to read the proclamation, and you. This is Administrative Professionals Week. Karen, come on up. Can I call you? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> and then you're going to say something. Do something. Yes, you are. And you yeah. Say. Okay. okay, ready. Um, administrative Professionals Week. Uh, administrative Professionals Week. Uh, playing a central role in coordinating the office operations of businesses, government, educational institutions, and other organizations. And whereas the work of administrative officials today requires advanced knowledge and expertise in communications, computer, software, 
computer software, office technology, project management, organization, customer service, and other vital management responsibilities. And whereas professional, uh, Administrative Professionals Week is observed annually in workforce around the world to recognize the important contributions of administrative support staff and is sponsored by the International Association of Administrative Professionals and whereas the Administrative Professionals Week 2014 is focused on honoring the office professionals who make offices work, reflecting the integral and central role that office professionals play in modern business. And lastly, therefore, be it resolved, the Borough Media proclaims the week of April 20 to 26, 2014 as Administrative Professionals Week and Wednesday, April 23rd as Administration Administrative Professionals Day. Uh, saluting the valuable contributions of administrative professionals in the workplace. Proclaim. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate it. Um, my colleagues and I, Diana Comer, our ch cur uh, current chapter president of our local chapter, and Marianne Agnew is our vice president. I'm serving as the secretary. Our treasurer, Cindy McGinley, could not be here this evening. But we are members of the International Association of Administrative Professionals. It's an um, international association that has, uh, how many members? Thousands. Thousands, Thousands of members. Um, we've all been members of this organization for a lot of years. And um, we enjoy the professional development we get from the organization as well as um, we're sounding boards for each other. We, we come up with a problem in the office, we call each other, so it's been a, a great experience. And uh, so I just encourage you all to honor your admin. I should have told you to call, the, to call us admins instead of administrative professionals. Okay. It's a little easier. And uh, I thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karen, one more chore you'll have is to figure out how to transfer these pictures I just took. <laughs> 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 Okay, I'll do well, that. Would you keep vote? <laughs> this is the next one. Karen, is it by coincidence that uh, Administrative Professionals Week or Admin Professional Week also coincides with Happiness, Happiness Week? Week? <laughs> <laughs> um, perhaps now is a good time to point out to those people who are viewing or listening that uh, tomorrow, Friday, the 18th, borough offices are closed. So it's a great way, I suppose, to start off, uh, lead into the administrative professionals week. Um, but otherwise, I would have given to it tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, but the offices will be open on Monday. So tomorrow, there is no business here at the, at the borough. Uh, business will resume on Monday. All right. Um, and of course, I called Mary Ann today to make this. Uh, are the offices closed tomorrow? She was kind of funny when I. Okay. Um, this is now event season in media. Uh, we had our opening <coughs> events this past weekend, and uh, we are planning lots of uh, upgrades this year, better experiences and safety for the people to attend. Um, is that my phone? Yeah, that was my Oh, okay. we'll turn it off. Um, the next, I, I, I don't want to call this an event, but uh, we do have a featured film that's going to be filmed in media over, I guess, a 40-day period. We are just talking about that, Ed. Um, we've met several times. You give me descriptions of this, what your plans are, uh, what it really might mean to media. So, Ed, if you don't mind, when you come up to the microphone, just take a couple minutes, and you'll explain a lot better than I will on the background, the people that are involved, and where you expect this to be by year-end 2014. The sure. same rule applies. Name, where you live. Uh, my name is Edward Joseph Eberwine III. Uh, I live in Old City, Philadelphia. I grew up in South Philadelphia. I was raised in Ambler. Um, so there's the, there's my bio. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, everybody. Um, we're, uh, we're slated to do a, uh, a comedic feature film by the title of Bad Boys, Crazy Girls. Um, it's, uh, it's a really interesting film. It's a very funny film written by Heather Maydot, who uh, wrote uh, for Mad, uh, a television show called Mad. Um, Tammy Teal Stedman is one of our producers. She is a Ridley Park, um, she grew up in Ridley Park. Her father was a 30 year a veteran of Ridley High School. Uh, she currently lives in Malvern, and she has an Academy Award for a feature, or for a short film that she produced in 2000. Uh, she's since been raising a family, and this is her first return 
to uh, the film industry. Um, we also have uh, local Philadelphia music producers, Tommy Joyner and Jamie Lokoff uh, of Milk Boy, uh, Milk Boy Recording Studios. Uh, if anyone knows 11th and Chestnut, there's Milk Boy, it's a bar. They have a live um, event space upstairs, and anyone maybe over at the Bryn Mawr Film Institute they used to have um, coffee shops down there, uh, and they're, uh, they're great creators as well. Tommy just moved into town. Um, he's in Rose Valley, he just had a baby, so good for Tommy. Um, then we have Don Argot and Sheena Joyce. Uh, they are the directors on the project. Don Argot and Sheena Joyce uh, are known, uh, they're Sundance alums, uh, for their feature documentaries, um, Art of the Steel, uh, the feature uh, documentary about how the Barnes Foundation made its way uh, out of Marion to the Parkway. And they also, um, their, their first big uh, Sundance film was School of Rock, which is uh, a documentary on rock and roll high school in New York. And they uh, just released a, another documentary feature film um, about uh, nuclear power. Um, our film, like I said, is called Bad Boys, Crazy Girls. It's a uh, comedy. It's a, a feature-length comedy film that uh, involves a, a high school uh, librarian and uh, the guidance counselor. They, they decide that they, uh, they're unlucky in love, and uh, to become lucky in love, they, they see all their friends, they see all the girls always going after the bad boy, they see all the girls always, um, all the boys going after the, the crazy girl. They think they need to transform themselves into bad boys and crazy girls to get the job done, and it's a blind leading the blind, uh, trip through the comedy, uh, self-exploration, where they come out the other end, and lo and behold, we fall in love with each other because of the experience. That's the uh, feature film plot in a nutshell. We've chosen media as our set, as our set piece, as uh, the location where the entire film takes place. Um, we're filming most, uh, we're slated to film most of the film here in media. Uh, State Street being a major part of the visual aesthetic of, um, of the film. Our director of photography, his name is Chase Bowman, um, uh, Carol Bowman and uh, his father Stephen Bowman. Uh, lived just outside of the media. Chase grew up in the media. Chase shot the first film that I ever produced called Cost of a Soul that we shot in Philadelphia in 2009. And uh, Chase has since lived in New York and worked on uh, major uh, motion pictures. And now he lives in Los Angeles and he is back home um, filming his hometown, uh, which is a really cool thing. I kind of wanted to originally shoot this in Ambler because that's where I grew up, but we wound up in media and media is a beautiful place uh, as it is. You made a, a good choice. Yes. Yeah, excellent joke. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so the overview is that we, we begin filming in May, um, and we're gonna uh, we have a twenty day film shoot, uh, which is a rigorous film schedule. Um, the majority of filming uh, will take place within the borough of Media. We have locations literally within a block of this building. Uh, the mayor and uh, uh, borough manager and everybody that we've met with has uh, really just welcomed us, and it's been. Uh, been a great experience uh, meeting with a lot of the businesses. Uh, I spoke with Sue Bear today, and I spoke with uh, David Messiak um, uh, with the Business Authority. Uh, everybody's just been very helpful. Uh, all the various businesses along State Street that we approached have been uh, very welcoming and very accommodating. We are what is uh, commonly known as a low-budget, independent feature film, um, which just means that we're going to do uh, a really amazing job with almost no money. So, um, our intended uh, our intended venue uh, for this, uh, no promises here, this is always a crapshoot, we, we, we make the film, we do the best job we can, and then we hope for the best, and hope that it uh, you know, takes on a life of its own. Our intended um, uh, festival, and where we intend to take this, the venue, um, first up, you know, Sundance Film Festival is kind of our intended hopeful, uh, and we have uh, some, some legs, as we call it, to get there. Um, and then, of course, uh, pending a distribution and all, all the good stuff, um, we're hoping that uh, theatrical run and uh, streaming, the, the distribution world for uh, theatrical film is somewhat in flux these days, so who knows where it's all going to wind up. But, um, uh, this is uh, what you would call a, a real film. It's a, it's a film that you uh, will go and see in a movie theater and hopefully laugh your face off. Um, and that said, um, you know everybody involved in this project, with the exception of 
the actors who are coming in from Los Angeles, Allison Jones, who worked with Tammy in LA on her uh, the feature film that, uh, or the short film that uh, they won the Oscar for, uh, has returned to cast the film. We uh, cannot, well, Hollywood Reporter let it out of the bag yesterday. Adam Pally, who is on the Mindy Project, I don't know if anybody, uh, anybody is up on their, their local, uh, or their television, uh, the Mindy Project is a, a funny comedy show on uh, television, and Adam is kind of uh, the, one of the rising stars on that. So uh, we have another big cast of uh, characters, uh, big Hollywood names, a lot of interesting casting is going on, and uh, so that's uh, that's the whole thing. And the credits, uh, the credits we talked about. Uh, um, yes, of course. Um, you know, special thanks and uh, credit to oh, well, the <laughs> um, uh, You know, we do this in conjunction uh, with you. This is not something that we can do alone. Uh, we've been offered so many um, things that, have, that are helping make this film. Uh, we would not be able to uh, complete filming without, uh, without the cooperation of media, and uh, for that we would like to uh, make sure that uh, the borough of media, uh, or however you would like us to present media, um, it's a nice big special thank you and logo image in the final credits of the film. And uh, you know we also need extras. If anybody uh, is interested, um, our offices, just so everybody knows, are one. That's a dangerous thing to say. What's that? That's a dangerous thing to say in this room. The extras? <laughs> well, I think we're up to veto too. Yeah, we do. Um, so with that, with uh, the office, uh, our office has been generously donated to us uh, from Media Real Estate, another very welcoming um, partnership that we've been able to uh, establish. Jeffrey Catterat has been amazing, and uh, he has offered us uh, modest accommodations, but 134 East State Street, right next to Vinny's. Uh, Vinny's is really happy that we're eating lunch there every day. And, um, and so our, our office is in the basement of uh, the Yellow Corner home there, uh, next to the massage uh, parlor. So if you need a massage, come on over and say hi. How, how many do you, people will you have that will be throughout the town spending money, doing different things? Our, uh, on uh, any given day, uh, right now we've got about 10 people working in the office, uh, so there's about 10 people. Next week, uh, our director of photography flies in tomorrow. Next week it ramps up even more, so we'll have even more people in the office. And uh, come uh, production, we will have approximately 30 to 40 people running through, uh, not running through, but uh, coming through the town every day that we film, that we film here, um, as well as uh, our production designer, our art department, the people who need to be purchasing materials and anything that we could possibly imagine to use on the film, um, that will all come and be locally sourced. Uh, and you know all, anything that we could possibly imagine, from coffees to food to ice cream to ice to all the local uh, food that we need to purchase, um, will all be purchased here in media. Um, I've been told that I am the point person for you. That you will, that I will try to make everything happen. I'd like to negotiate that 6:30 a.m. starting time. <laughs> That's just crew call. There's there's pre call, which, which is when I show up. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. By the way, I think I could have explained this just as well. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, well, we do have a motion on our agenda that, that we'll be reaching soon enough that will go a long way towards determining um, whether or not we're going to be seeing you here in a, in a few weeks. Um, but, and, uh, and we eagerly await your motion. <laughs> Very good. There are things that we need to do as a, as a body to make sure that everything is being done properly. If we grant the motion, There'll be a bit of excitement and a buzz, more so than usual. You know, I am time. at your disposal in any way, shape, or form uh, to help assist, answer questions, or to do anything that you need. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ed. Uh, now, to continue with the report, does anybody have any other questions for Ed? Before I continue? Yeah. All right, Ed, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, other items. Dining on the Stars starts in a couple weeks. Um, <coughs> the police department has. We decided to kind of ramp up safety somewhat. Uh, I think the way we've had events, uh, we're going to, this will basically be from Orange Street to Jackson Street, just like last year, and Jasper to Baker, that's the perimeter. Um, we're going to put a little more protection at Jackson and Orange to prevent anybody from making a, an erroneous left or right turn. There's a lot of brainstorming ideas on how we're going to do that, whether it's barricades. Right now, I believe we're going to have cars there that will be basically donated for the night. 
uh, instead of just those small wooden barriers. And um, so I, I think it would afford more protection for people that are sitting there dining. And there's several other updates that I'll just keep everybody posted on for it. So that's going to be the perimeter, Orange Street to Jackson uh, for Dining Under the Stars um, with, again, added protection. Um, the first event, the Roots Ramble, went really well. There were no problems uh, as far as the police were concerned at all. Um, Super Sunday, there were a couple minor problems which uh, were being addressed. Um, the, uh, on the parking issues, the, uh, I've been working with SEPTA. We had one meeting, but we got several conference calls coming up. SEPTA in the county uh, on some longer term parking solutions and shorter term. So we'll keep you updated on how they go. Um, also, the remote parking issue where uh, we're paying a little more in a premium to be able to park cars at different businesses um, so that it enables more people to be able to pull up to a bank or a law firm uh, where we have parking and, and be able to park there freely uh, in off hours like after 5 o'clock and on weekends. So I think uh, we're going to discuss that further next in two weeks. So I think we can do motion tonight. Okay. And do I have to say what it is or just turn that over to you? Okay, let me see what else I have on here. I think I've covered everything. 911, yes. Please feel free and please call 911 if you have an emergency. It's the only way you can really do it now. We used to have um, another way of doing it, which was dispatchers that were here. They're not here anymore, uh, obviously, so call 911. Paul, I'm sure you'll repeat that. you got to cover for the day. Okay. Um, and the proposal that we're talking about as far as uh, the other proposal are parking passes for the, uh, uh, for the staff. And I think uh, Ed said that there were 10 of them. And from now to the end of their shoot is approximately 40 days, I would say. Uh, starting with Monday on through when they expect to leave at some point in May. So um, one of the things that municipalities do usually when the production company comes and is spending that much money, he made it sound like a small amount, it's more than a small amount. Um, but usually the buy-in for the borough is that they give them some accommodations. In this case, it would be parking passes for the 10 people for that 40-day period um, that they would be here. So. And I don't know if you need a motion for that or whether that would be something that we would grant. Don't need that. Don't need that. Okay. All right. Any questions? Is there any questions for the mayor? Hearing none, we'll move into the council committee reports. Uh, first, recreation and health, councilman board. All right. <clears throat> Regarding the uh, board of health, they met on uh, April 1st. Um, the first um, resolution they made was to move the Next meeting is July 8th, um, so it doesn't conflict with the July 4th holiday, so that would be Tuesday the July 8th is the next meeting of the uh, Board of Health. There are currently two openings on the Board of Health, so any residents who have a background in health care, public safety, uh, food sanitation, anything related to health um, should apply, send a, a resume to our borough manager and uh, it will be reviewed by the uh, board. Um, as far as other business, the health officer has been adopting the, uh, the new federal health code, which is in line with Pennsylvania adopting it as well. Um, she's meeting with the uh, representative from the farmer's market to get that up and running so when the farmer's market starts that there are no concerns health-wise. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as the, the Board of Health. Um, as far as REC, they also met on April 1st. They um, are running a uh, or getting discount tickets to the Union game, the Philadelphia Union game, that would be May the 17th. There's still apparently plenty of tickets left at $20 per ticket, so if you're interested, you can see the, uh, the rec office for a, a ticket to the game. Um, this Saturday, April the 19th, is the annual Lunch with Easter Bunny. Um, the egg hunt begins at 11 o'clock. It will probably end at about 11.05. 3,000 eggs at the moment. It doesn't take that long to pick up 3,000 eggs. They're getting 3,000 eggs this year because last round it took two minutes and hopefully it'll bump up to five minutes this year to find them all. And then um, the Easter Bunny will be making an appearance. There'll be food, hot dogs, and so on for the kids. So that runs from uh, 11 to 1.30 this Saturday, April 19th. Hopefully it'll be 
the nice weather, the weather will cooperate. Um, starting on May 21st, Wednesday, May 21st, there will be adult tennis lessons. It's a, an annual thing that the Rec Commission sponsors. They run from 6 to 7.30 um, for four weeks. The cost is $50 for borough residents and $55 for non-borough residents. So if you're interested in taking tennis lessons down at the tennis courts at Burrell Field, uh, again, that's May 21st, Wednesday, that the, uh, the event starts. Um, there will be three movie nights this summer, June 13th, July 12th, and August 9th, down at Burrell Field. That's where they set up the big screen, and um, the movies are free. Um, that pretty much guarantees that on June 13th, July 12th, and August 9th, it will rain. Um, and they generally schedule them the following week. But um, hopefully we'll be luckier this year than we have in the, uh, in the past. Um, there is a Blue Rocks trip scheduled for June 27th. That is kind of tentative. I don't have any other details beyond that. But generally they run a bus trip to Wilmington to see the, uh, the Blue Rocks. And there is, if there is interest, they will run a um, Spirit of Philadelphia trip. That's the boat that kind of cruises up and down the Delaware. Uh, generally that's sometime in September. But I think they're just kind of gauging interest to see if people are, uh, are ready for that. And in a uh, related matter, this involves the uh, group called CRC Watersheds, are hosting on Saturday, May 3rd at 9 a.m. a stream cleanup at Glen Providence Park. So if you want to go in and wade through the water and clean up, um, either at 9 o'clock on May 3rd. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Councilman Boyd? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, historic the uh, authority and uh, R as Councilman Lisa Johnson. Thank you. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the Media and Business Authority that we met this month um, and talked about. Uh, first, one thing they talked about, which I've mentioned before, is the low interest loan program that the banks in the in the town are getting together to create a program for the businesses in media to upgrade their facades at uh, discounted loan rates. Um, what they'd like to do is um, partner with the borough and ask the borough to waive the fees for a period of time, not forever, to um, waive the fees for um, these projects. So it would be a small donation on the borough's part to help the businesses um, improve their facades. <clears throat> so, I'm not sure if we'd like to... I don't know that it needs to be done in a form of motion. It does, okay? Yeah, so, Jeff Smith and our solicitor indicated it needs to be done in a motion, so... So, I'd like to make a motion to um, have the borough waive the fees for uh, a period of time. Do I need to yeah. define the time? Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> do, we have, do we have to fit the time that... that did the application have to meet the same requirements as that of the low interest loan? I would think so. I mean, the, the idea is it, it's to wait in conjunction for, with. Right, right. Could I just say that? Yes. Not, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> so or, I you put a number of months on it, it can always be extended. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, we, we'd like to waive the fees for the same period of time that the loan program is in, in place. Um, so I. Make that important motion. I would second that, but I'll also ask, do you have any idea, Jeff, about how long that we're talking I, I about having? I don't know how long. I, I mean, my only suggestion would maybe just do it for this calendar year, and then you can always look at extending that's it for idea. the next calendar year, if that's okay. Yeah, I'd be more comfortable if there's some deadline on it. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a deadline on here. So. Also, I will make the motion, amend for motion. To indicate the time period will be through the calendar year 2014. Yes. Can I second that amendment? Is there any discussion on motion? Uh, hearing none, call the question. All those who favor waiving the borough's bid, uh, building permit fees for in connection with the low interest facade loans for calendar year 2014, please say aye. Yes. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Thank you. Um, other items that are involving the um, Media Business Authority is that they received a grant for $2,000 from the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts, and that will help them fund their annual Jazz by Night <coughs> celebration, which is on November 15th of this year. Um, 
They wanted me to mention that the Roots Ramble was a great success. Bob already covered that. Um, there are no police incidents or arrests, which is always a good thing. And the 14th Annual State Street Blues Stroll is coming up on Saturday, June 14th. They also wanted me to mention that the Dining Under the Stars program is looking for volunteers <coughs> from the community for this year's for this year's seventh annual Dining Under the Stars season, seven years. Um, anyone interested should contact the MBA at 610-566-5039. There'll be over 20 restaurants participating this year, and the opening night is Wednesday, May 7th. So what do they want the volunteers to do? Var various things, but one is to be guides for the patrons. You know, if people have questions where a restaurant might be, or where can I park, or you know, just various questions. They just need people to be helpful and keep an eye out, make sure people are safe. Um, and that's my report on the, the MBA. The uh, HARB. Historic Architectural Review Board also met this month and I just wanted to remind people, I've mentioned this before, we proved it last time, that the design guidelines are on the, on the website and they're really for anyone's use. You know, they, they're tailored to a historical facility but really you can apply it to anyone, any house, any building's use. So take a look at the guidelines and uh, take advantage of, of the wealth of resources that we have. The Media Historic Society has not yet met this month, they meet next Monday, um, but I do know that they want people to know about their Christmas house tour, which they do every other year, we will be doing it this December, and they're still looking for houses to be on the tour. So if you have, if you have a house or you have a friend who has a house, and it doesn't have to be in the borough per se, it can be in the surrounding areas too. Um, they've expanded the tour out a bit. Um, contact contact Catherine LaRusso and her number is 610-891-9929 and let her know about possible candidate for the tour. And that is my report for tonight. All right, are there any questions for Councilwoman Lisa Johnson? We will then move on to property, public safety, public work, and civil service. That's Vice President Robinson. Good evening. Uh, we'll try to be as short as possible, but I'm not sure if that's going to be possible. Uh, first and foremost, as I state every council meeting, the media fire company and EMTs are always looking for volunteers to either be firefighters and or to work in the administrative side of the department. Uh, any resident or neighboring residents uh, who would like to uh, commit just a small amount of time, please stop by the fire department and I'm sure that they'll be happy to put you to work in some capacity. Uh, with regards to agenda items, uh, the first on the agenda for uh, my committee this evening is the awarding of bids for the Olive Street parking garage. Um, this has been a project that has been discussed for well over two years, probably heading on, on three years. Uh, at our last workshop meeting, we were uh, received the uh, first, I guess, formal bids on the project. Uh, it was very disturbing uh, to hear that, that we had had estimates for a significant amount of time in the $350,000 for a total uh, restoration of, of the garage. When bids came in, uh, they were projected at over $729,000, significantly higher than what was estimated. Uh, at the workshop, we asked that these numbers uh, be looked at and were verified. Uh, and it is my understanding, because I did not get the email because of the time of day it was, but an email finally did come out very late this afternoon. Uh, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Engineer, that the numbers are basically accurate? Uh, that's correct. All right. Uh, 
there is a, on the agenda, there is a, a uh, desire to go out to bid this evening. I myself would like to table the motion, either have a special meeting of council next week and or have a voting session of council at our next workshop, which would be the first week of May. Uh, I am asking this because this is a significant increase in the cost. Uh, we did discuss it at workshop, but at workshop it was also discussed that we weren't sure if this was an accurate number or not. Uh, this could end up being close to a million dollar project. Uh, as chairman of properties, I do not feel that a, a cursory review of this 15 minutes prior to council uh, allots the amount of time that we should dedicate to a project of this magnitude. And I would like to uh, make a motion that we table this until either a special meeting uh, and or our workshop meeting of May 2nd, 1st. I guess as a, as a, as a, as a technical matter, a technical concern, right? there, needs to be a, there needs to be a motion before we have a motion to table. Um, so um, I, I gather, uh, Vice President Robinson, you're not willing to. I am not willing to make a motion at this point. I, would like, I think this is a major issue, and I think uh, we as council need to have more opportunity. Uh, I will also ask the engineer a week delay would make a difference in the project start date and completion date? I can't answer that question, but if my understanding, if you made a decision at the 1st of May, I think we could still achieve the start date and the finish date. Okay. And that would be for the, uh, if, if a, a job is awarded, that the contractor supplies the bonds, insurance, and all the necessary paperwork to the borough in time. We would work uh, with the contractor and get everything done speedily. All right, well, any other questions for the agent? Well, I'm sure it will, but they're not from me. Okay, well, um, so uh, the, the, what we're faced with right now is, is whether or not there's going to be a motion for us to discuss. Is there anybody who's willing to make a motion at the present time with regard to awarding uh, the contract for repairs of the Ellis Street parking garage? I'd just like to point out, I think um, if it's May 1st, we'll not cause a delay in the project, and Councilor Robinson would like more time to investigate the associated costs. I think I'm personally uh, welcoming a, of, of uh, having a special meeting that night to make an official vote if that is the way the rest of the council feels. But I guess I'll just point out one thing. This has been a two and a half year project. It's been our budget on our budget the last three fiscal years. Um, and my only concern with delaying this vote tonight is that it will be put off another year, mm -hmm. and our garage does need these repairs desperately. Uh, the bids are higher than we need. I would point out the email we received at 3 o'clock this afternoon. The, the summary of that is the bid amounts that we received are accurate. So I'm, I'm more curious what more needs to be discussed, aside from the fact that our engineer and his consultants believe that the bid amounts we received were accurate. We did receive four bids, and the lowest bid is the amount of $729,000. So, but again, I will defer. So I think there's several areas that we need to discuss. It's, 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 do we do it all at one time? Do we do it in stages? Do we recognize, do we recognize that, you know, if we do it in stages that we have to anticipate a greater cost? Well, we, we discussed uh, this at we workshop at length. Like we, we did discuss it at workshop. Yeah, the, the consensus was that we should do it this oh, year at once. This, but Mr. Again, Davidson, if you so desire, make a motion. Uh, I'll, I'll pass. All right, does anyone else wish to make a motion at this time? Um, if not, then uh, we'll be seeing each other a little bit earlier than we thought. We'll see each other probably next week sometime. Oh, or two yeah. weeks. You said May 1st. Yeah, I guess that's right. We can make our, uh, our next so workshop meeting is May 1st. So if you just direct Mr. Smith to advertise it as a voting. That's all we uh, Mr. Smith, will you please do so? Yes. Okay. Excellent. I um, appreciate that from all members of council. You know, uh, this is a million dollar vote and just a little bit more discussion I think would be appropriate for, for all of us. Thank you. Uh, second on the agenda, fascinating, uh, to authorize the advertisement of bids for parking garage kiosks. Uh, 
Only thing this would do was give us the opportunity, ability to go out uh, for bid, take a look at what kind of bids we receive with regards to uh, using kiosks in the parking garage, eliminating the standing poles, uh, and actually they are the oldest meters that we have in the borough, correct? correct? Uh, so getting to uh, a little bit newer technology, uh, I am aware that right now there are some companies that are signed up with CoStars, which is uh, a cooperative purchasing through the state of Pennsylvania, so we may not be required to go out for formal bid, but only thing this will do is to, is to give us uh, a greater understanding of what the costs uh, and the benefits would be with regards to this project. So I'd make a, a motion that we, we authorize our, our um, borough manager and engineer and solicitor to, uh, to go out to bid for the possibility of kiosks for our parking garage. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Here we go. Call for discussion. I'll call the question. All those in favor of uh, authorizing the advertisement of bids for parking garage kiosks, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. And parking garage kiosks, for those who are not familiar with the term, I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> they're, they're, you, you see them fairly frequently in, in Philadelphia. They're just big boxes where you can go and get your little parking stuff as opposed to a meter. It's a centralized area where you can get uh, a uh, uh, some indication that you've paid your parking fee. And that's what we're looking uh, to do, which is uh, getting bids for how much it would cost us to install those kiosks in our garage uh, as opposed to the, cur the meters that are currently there. Uh, next on the agenda is the uh, uh, motion to approve or enter into a right-of-way agreement and temporary access agreement with Sunoco Pipeline. Uh, and with that, and Mr. Smith, I may ask you to assist. We will also ask them to uh, be in compliance with the stormwater controls and best management practice and operations and maintenance agreement. Well, you also, you're, I'm also asking that you authorize the borough to execute that as well. That, that's the agreement that uh, Middletown Township requires. I that, while they're taking all the, 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 the obligation, the borough is a part of it. Okay. So we would enter into the store where both of us do. The, yeah, the borough but, and and Sunoco right, Pipeline right, so uh, would enter into this agreement. For those that you may not be aware, uh, many years ago the borough in fact owned its water company and its sewer <laughs> company, which were located in uh, actually Upper Providence and Middletown townships. The borough still owns the land, has leased the land to Aqua. Uh, in that land is Sunoco pipelines that I found very interesting going back and looking at the original uh, uh, right-of-way agreements. It was actually entered in with a Sam Riddle of uh, Riddle Memorial Hospital and the owner of Man of War back in 1931. So uh, he owned the property prior to, to the borough, uh, but it does provide a right-of-way for uh, Keystone Pipeline Company of 1937. Uh, so this goes back some time, so I would ask that we enter into an agreement uh, on the stormwater controls as well as the amendment to a right-of-way agreement with Sunoco Pipeline. Uh, and if I'm and not saying that correctly, please correct me, Mr. Solicitor. Well, in addition, there's, there's three documents here, and you just mentioned the stormwater, the right-of-way agreement, also the temporary access. Temporary access. And I would point out at the last uh, work session there was discussion of potential consideration and Sunoco has agreed to pay the borough $5,000 for the temporary access because they already own the easement. They don't. Really? Yeah, they have the Pretty right to, to be in that area and do work. The temporary access, they're, they're going to stage some equipment outside of their easement area and that they're paying and offering the borough $5,000. And if it goes beyond four months, another thousand dollars a month. Thank you for doing all. Yeah, that's that's a good to ask, I suppose. See? Yeah. Yeah, same. Thank you very much uh, for looking into that, Mr. Solicitor. Uh, that was. Rose. I will have that in a form of a motion, deferring to the, the the way in which Mr. Solicitor referenced it. <laughs> Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? There you go. Call for discussion. All those who favor the borough entering into our 
uh, an agreement for stormwater controls right of way and temporary access with regard to the Sunoco pipeline project as outlined by Councilman Robinson. Please say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Next on the agenda is uh, authorizing the advertisement of bids for sidewalk repair and maintenance of borough-owned properties. Uh, this is somewhat of a uh, safety net. We are in hopes that it that uh, uh, the properties and the sidewalks that we're looking to repair will fall underneath the mandated bid requirements. However, to be safe and not to uh, uh, waste a month of spring, uh, we would like to uh, authorize the advertisement of bids uh, for the maintenance, excuse me, for the maintenance and sidewalk repair of. Uh, a variety of borough owned properties. This would go anywhere from Borough Hall here to some properties that we own on, on State Street. And is that it? State Street? Yeah, some of the parking lots. Parking uh, lots. Rural Park, yeah, really runs again. All looking for safety issues. So, with that, I make a motion we authorize the, the manager, engineer, and solicitor to go out to for advertisement for bids, sidewalk repair and maintenance of borough owned properties. There is a second on the motion. Any, uh, any discussion on the motion? Here we go. Call for discussion. All those who favor authorizing the advertisement of bids for sidewalk repair and maintenance at borough owned properties, please say aye. Aye. And aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Next on the list is recommendations to replace air conditioning, uh, some air conditioning units and to purchase new signs at Borough Hall. I would say this would be, an, it'd be required to be in the form of a motion. This has been items that have been uh, referenced in our budget, approved within our budget. And the only thing I'm looking at here, Jeff, is I'm not very clear on your memo of holy smoke, September 2013 with regarding to price quotes. Sure. Uh, several different prices. I'm just trying to make sure that we would be referring to the uh, proper yeah. proper pricing. Yeah, for the uh, for the window unit uh, on the first floor of the police department, the low uh, is Palm Petty at $1,200. And for the replacement of the air conditioner on the third floor, the low quote is from Cool It Heating and Air Conditioning in the amount of $6,268. And I would make that in the form of a motion to approve those bids. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? There's no call for discussion. All those who favor. Um, uh, and the expenditure of, uh, as outlined by Mr. Robinson, for purchases of air conditioning uh, at Burwell Hall, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. And the purchasing of, and that, and that same motion would be also the purchasing for uh, repairs for the signs for, for the borough hall. These would be the signs located at Jackson uh, Street and the signs located at uh, Fourth Street. Right. I didn't hear any figure for that. At $2,475 each for a grand total of $4,950 uh, from Sign of Rama. Is that in my packet? Should be. If not, I apologize. It was in the uh, workshop. I apologize. And I make that in the form of a motion. Is there a second on the motion? Oh, second. Was it, what was the amount again? $4,950. Yeah, I'll second. Uh, yeah, second. Second. Again, these are all items that were already in the budget. Uh, as referenced, the one memo here goes back to 2003, September 2013. Uh, so these are nothing more than actually taking action on items that have been in the budget and or basically been reviewed and approved. And right. we, we need to award it to somebody that's basically mm -hmm. sign around. Sign around. Okay. Can't forget sign around. Um, now just so I'm clear about this, the signs are, are located right here in the borough property? One and two of them? The one located at the entrance here, I'm going to say at 4th at, at okay. Street, mm -hmm. and the entrance at 3rd and Jackson Street. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion that's been made, and I believe it has been seconded. Uh, it is for uh, the expenditure of $4,950 to sign a Rama for the purposes of replacing two of the Burr Hall signs. 
is uh, I'll call the question. All those who favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Okay, next on the list is uh, stormwater improvement for Ultimate Pal Palman Street. Uh, this is falls beneath the required bid requirements. Uh, this is between 3rd Street and 2nd Street on the east side. Uh, it has been an area of issue for years. Uh, we were finally able to take care of it. We have made several attempts to uh, modify, adjust, um, change the slope uh, over the course of the last 20 years. None of them have worked. Uh, so this time we will actually be putting in a proper storm drain and hooking it up to, uh, I believe, the, the laterals on 3rd Street. Uh, the bid will not exceed 17500 and the contract is for AFD. And I think that before we motion. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Why don't we do you have any idea, Mr. Smith? Uh, uh, this looking at the engineer, I think once we notify the contractor, I think within reason, within the next probably 60 days, would you say? Yeah, we'll get a schedule uh, and have that brought back to uh, Borough Council to make sure it doesn't conflict with any other activities or any uh, other things planned for that yeah. area. Uh, we'd like to get it done as soon as possible. Thank you, the raise. Well, okay, no, that's good. Various things. Yeah. Right. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, fortunately, it's not on the great roof, but no, gotcha. I'm just wondering what the timing is yeah. so we can plan like you Okay, now it's time for all the fun stuff. Um, well, we, oh, sorry, so we have, we have a motion. Sorry, uh, there's, there's been a motion. Um, I believe it has been seconded. Uh, any further call for discussion? Hearing none, all those who favor uh, uh, the payment to AF Damon in an amount not to exceed $17,500 for storm, uh, storm sewer improvements. On Haldeman Street between 2nd and 3rd Streets, please say aye. aye. Yes, aye. Those opposed, please say nay. <laughs> the motion passes. Uh, I am thankful that uh, we are taking action on this because those of you who are familiar with that stretch, now, particularly in the wintertime, that the water sheets across that roadway and it becomes icy and it becomes uh, potentially very dangerous. So glad to see that we're taking that on. We're going to uh, get that resolved. Okay, uh, mass gathering permits. This is bit number seven. Mass gathering permit application and parking permit request for BBCG Films LLC starting May 1 through May 30th. I think that between the mayor and the individual this evening, we've talked enough about it. I think it's a great idea. I think it's going to provide some uh, uh, economic impact for the community. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool that all of us will be able to see a film that is uh, featured in the borough media. We're all going to be able to take a look at our different favorite stores, restaurants, and, and homes. So I think this is a, a great idea and make a motion that we approve the, the mass gathering permit as well as providing the permits that have been requested by the mayor uh, earlier this evening. And Mr. May, the number of those permits was 10? Yeah, that's based on what he said. Okay. And they're, they're, they're not working in the office. All right, is there a second on the motion? Second. There is a second. Any discussion on the motion? Just yes, to uh, let everyone know, 134 East Straight Street was the first place I lived in when I moved into the borough of media, ironic as it is. It's already making a plug for a credit. Sure, it is. Mm -hmm. well, I have a question. If we use the May 30th as the, the uh, closing date, and if they don't finish in by May 30th, it's they're in trouble, right? If, if there's like rain events and things like that, I mean, they have a pretty well scheduled except for unforeseen. Right. So I'm wondering if um, just having a little more lead time, whether it's 10 days more, would be better. Well, we're, we're meeting again before May 30, so if there proves to be some problem with the scheduling, we'll be able to extend the mass gathering permit or uh, vote Please another one. Uh, Please remember that. Hope that there's going to be delays. Yeah, we can right. amend it. Again. I can only imagine rain and stuff like right. that. Okay. So we have an opportunity to extend it if needed. Okay. Okay. Look, any other uh, questions? Hearing none. All those in favor of granting the mass gathering permit application to BBCG Films, as outlined by Councilman Robinson, as well as uh, their request for ten parking permits, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes.
Next on the agenda is the Veterans Legacy Memorial Day Parade, Monday, May 26th, starting at 9 a.m. to <coughs> 1 p.m. Uh, I think we, uh, most of us know the, the parade group. We'll go into that this evening just for, for time, unless someone does have questions. The parade itself starts at 10, but you have 9 for 7. Set up time from 9, the event start time at 10, event stop time at noon, breakdown at 1. That's in the form of a motion for the Veterans Legacy Memorial Day Parade on May 26th. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? There is no call for discussion. All those in favor of granting the Mass Gathering Permit application for the Veterans Legacy Memorial Day Parade, please say aye. Aye. Yes. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Uh, we go from Memorial Day to Bastille Day. Uh, mass Gathering Permit for Bastille Day celebration at State Fair, State Street Fair. Uh, on Saturday, July 12th, set up time 5 o'clock, event start time 5.30, event stop time 10 p.m., breakdown uh, 11 p.m. Completed uh, by 11 p.m. Completed by 11 p.m. I make that in the form of a motion. Second. There is a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? There we go, call for discussion. All those in favor of <coughs> granting the mass gathering permit application for the Media Business Authority's best deal by celebration. Please say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Number 10, mass gathering permit for the Town Talk newspaper Fall Super Sunday. Sunday, September 7, 2014. Rain date, September 14, 2014. Set up starting at 7 a.m. Event start time, 9 a.m. Event stop time, 4 p.m. Breakdown to be done by 5 p.m. State Street. Uh, from Monroe to Orange, Veterans Square, from Baker to Front. Uh, make that in the form of a motion, Mr. President. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of mass gathering permit application for the Town Talk newspapers Fall Super Sunday, please say aye. Yes. Aye. Uh, those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Next on the agenda is the Community Arts Center 12th Annual Fine Arts Festival. This will be a Saturday. September 27th, 2014, uh, I did speak uh, with Zubair Khan, the executive director of the Business Authority, uh, asking you know, what his and the NBA's position was with closing down all of State Street. On a Saturday, uh, it was highly recommended by Zubair that it continue to be on a Saturday and to be located on State Street. Uh, with that recommendation of the MBA, I will make a motion that we approve the mass gathering permit for the Community Arts Center 12th Annual Fine Arts and Craft Festival for Saturday, September 27th. Uh, set up time, which will be changed. They have 6 a.m., which will be 7. Uh, event start is 10 a.m. Event stop is 5. Breakdown is 6. So, Mr. Smith, if you could please let them know that South Time will be within our borough code, which is 7 a.m. Uh, State Street, uh, Church Street to past Orange, end of trolley. Uh, somewhere between 50 and 75 vendors. And that's a form of a motion. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those who favor approving the mass gathering permit application for the Community Art Center's 12th annual. Fine Arts and Crafts Festival, please say aye. aye. Yes. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Okay, mass gathering permit application for the March of Dimes Walk, Sunday, September 28, 2014, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, last year was the first year of, of the event. Uh, it is a kind of mini walkathon uh, in which uh, participants walk down State Street and then come around to Orange and then down Front Street back to uh, uh, Burrall Field. It was very well received. I forget, Bob, you were at the meeting, the chief mentioned there was $25,000 or something like that they raised last year. So I was, yeah. you know, it, the event went very well. Uh, I think it also was very successful for many of our establishments in, in the borough. Uh, so with that, I would make a motion that we approve the mass gathering permit application for the March of Dimes walk Sunday, September 28th. Uh, just checking our start time. 
once again, they have here. It was before nine o'clock last year when they had everyone gathered. That's why I was. They had. Well, I'm um, looking. They were looking here. It is. They have a setup time of six, which we'll ask to be at seven. Uh, they said start time at nine, stop time at one. Uh, breakdown they also have at one, so I'm assuming it'll still be take broken down within within the times that are permitted within the borough code. So with that, I would make a motion to approve the mass gathering permit for the March Dimes on September 28, 2014. Is there a second? There is a second on the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? I, I guess there's amending that gathering permit to change the start time. Pardon me? Have you changed the start time on that? Yes. I guess the, the 7 a.m. to 7. Okay. So the event actually starts at 9. But other yes. than the walk that you mentioned. They do other things at, at Burrell Field and in the playground. So that's why there's a mass gathering? Well, they should, they, they're on State Street. They walk down but State Street. They're not going to keep State Street shut. Though. No, the police, will, the police follow along with them, shutting down as they need an opening back up. So at no one time is all of State Street closed. It's a uh, rolling, roving, rolling, rolling, roving shutdown of, of State Street and Club Street. Very similar to the Chinese uh, New Year's, where they just kind of have, they have police cars, they cruise along, they shut down as the people move, then we open, you know, we open back up again. So. The only street that is closed is the segment of Edgemont Street between the state and front, and there's an assemble there, and they have portable facilities during that period of time. Okay. Um, so there's a motion to be made, uh, and uh, in the midst of all the talking back and forth, we, I think we had a second. Uh, we've had several uh, points of discussion. I will suggest that uh, we notify the applicant that uh, we are mindful of. They should be mindful of uh, using amplified music. Last year, it was um, something of a, of a, uh, a different wake up on Sunday morning for people who live in that neighborhood because they had very loud amplified music. And they were very nice when uh, they approached about it, they, they turned it down. But uh, a reminder that they should be mindful about their amplified music, I think, would be appropriate. Okay, um, all those who favor approving the mass gathering permit for the March of Times block, as uh, outlined by um, Mr. Robinson, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Okay, mass gathering permit, Media Business Authority, 34th Annual Media Food and Crafts Festival. Getting these things further and further out, we might as well start doing them all in January. Uh, this one is now October 5th, 2005, rain date. October 12th, 2014, this is the 35th <coughs> Annual Food and Crafts Festival. Um, just making sure the setup time. Uh, there is no setup time other than referencing the day, so we will make sure that we communicate to the business authority our borough requirements. Uh, the event would be 8 to 5, final breakdown at by, by 6.30. Uh, Anybody who has been in the borough for any amount of time is well aware of the food festival. Uh, so with that, I make that in a form of a motion that we approve with the amendment of defining the uh, setup time uh, to be discussed between the borough manager and the executive director of the business. Is this is the food festival. It says eight o'clock, eight to five, eight to six thirty. But that, that's that's rough. Not referencing the setup time. I'm looking at the application itself. So it's it's set event time eight to five. Set up time says Sunday, October fifth, two thousand fourteen. Yeah. I so. assume at the eight o'clock is set up time, especially on Sunday morning. Just you never know. I, you never know. It's an ongoing event. I don't think we'll have any issue. We haven't had had one in thirty four <coughs> years, so uh, I'm not anticipating one. All right, one more. Well, we haven't voted on. No, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> we have two more. I'm having so much fun. We have a mass gathering of mass gatherings today. Um, all right, so uh, there's a motion made. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those who favor the, uh, approving the mass gathering permit application for the, of the, for the Media Business Authority, the 34th Annual Media Food and Crafts Festival, as outlined by Mr. Robinson, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. 
Last, but without a doubt, not least, the Town Talk newspaper uh, Halloween Parade will be Saturday, October 25th, 2014, rain date October 26th, 2014. Set up time, 12 o'clock, event start, 2 o'clock, event stop, 4 o'clock, breakdown and finish will be 4 o'clock. State Street from Edgemont to Orange, Front Street from Edgemont to Orange. Uh, it's a Halloween parade, estimated, which I could believe in the lines of uh, approximately 10,000 people. It's been a uh, tradition here in media. All the kids love it, all the adults love it. So with that, I make a motion that we approve the application as submitted. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of granting the Town Talk newspaper's application for mass gathering permit for the Halloween parade, uh, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. We've got one more. Hot off the press. Uh, this was brought up at, at, at a workshop. It's Nativity BBM Parish. Uh, I guess it's their parish sidewalk block party. Uh, it is uh, the street address is 30 East Franklin. It would be the two streets that would be shut down. It would be the the 30 block of <coughs> of Franklin Street, and I'm assuming that would be East Franklin at that place, and the 300 block of Church Street. Eight to ten vendors. Uh, we've done this one for a couple of years. The um, event time is. 6, 8 of 14, so June 8th, 14th, set up time 9, event start time 1, breakdown, uh, or event stop time 4, breakdown is, is 5 o'clock. Uh, make that in the form of a motion. What day of the week is it? It is, uh, I'm assuming it's a Saturday, June 8th. And we have a June calendar. It is Saturday. No. Saturday. Sunday. 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 Is it Sunday? It's a Sunday. Really? June, right? June, June correct. June 8th. I promise. Okay. Sunday. June okay, you're right. 12th to Thursday. All right. There's been a motion made. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Not hearing any call for discussion. All those in favor of granting the mass gathering permit application of the Tivity BVM for its block party for the date and times as set forth by Councilman Robinson, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say that. The motion passes. Thank you. That concludes my report and the mass gathering permits for the month of April. Stay tuned, everybody. Thank you, Mr. President. Are there any questions for Councilman Ross? There are none. I think that uh, as you know, we will have an action or event at fall here in the borough. They can total of five parte, five different uh, events, just in September and October alone. Um, okay, so uh, we can move on to Community Development Personnel and Media Arts Council. That is my portion of the agenda. Uh, we have the first three items are related. Uh, they, re they relate to uh, pension agreements with our uh, with the police union and with the Service Employees International Union, that is uh, the uh, non-uniform uh, employees of the borough. Uh, over the past year, we were able to work with, or negotiate with both of those unions and obtain some concessions with regard to a pension, uh, among which are that uh, the employees will increase their contributions to the pension plan, and uh, there is a reduction of pension benefits upon disability. So these are good things for the borough. Uh, these, we have, as I said, we have reached an agreement, but we also have to make these agreements official. So we have, um, uh, first, uh, first item is adoption of the revised police pension joinder agreement. This is the agreement that memorializes the, uh, uh, the concessions that were made by the, uh, uh, the Fraternal Order of the Police. And so I will move that uh, we adopt the revised non-uniform pension joinder agreement with regard to the Fraternal Order of Police. There's been a motion, is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded, is there any questions? All those in favor of the revised police pension joinder agreement? 
You say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have. Good. Uh, the second item is basically the same thing, except uh, instead of the, the Fraternal Order of Police, it's the Service Employees International Union. Uh, this is with regard to our uh, non-uniform employees. And uh, I move that we adopt the revised non-uniform pension joinder agreement. Second. The motion is made seconded to revise the non-uniform pension joinder agreement. Uh, are there any questions on the motion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right, the third item is I think this was referred to this kind of belts and suspenders <laughs> approach to things. Uh, we've adopted these revised agreements, but we are also going to make that part of our board as there is um, our pension, uh, our pension uh, agreements are um, reflected in our, our, or, our, our um, borough's ordinances. And uh, so now we've made, uh, now we've adopted agreements that amend those uh, amend those agreements, we need to adopt amendments to our pension ordinance to reflect those changes. So I move that we uh, that we adopt an ordinance number one 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 zero, adopting the uh, or reflecting the changes made to our pension agreements with the Fraternal Order of the Police and with the Service Employees International Union. Is there a second to the motion? Second. There's been a motion made and seconded to amend ordinance number 1110 for the pension ordinance amendments for that of the police pension joinder agreement and revised non-uniform pension joinder agreement. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Fourth item is a right of way agreement for an entrance overhang at 18 South Monroe Street. Let me orient you to where that is. Uh, this is on Monroe Street in between State Street and Front Street. Those of you who are familiar with that intersection know that on one corner there is the Nudie restaurant across the street. From across State Street from that is the China Nail Salon. This property is located directly behind the China Nail Salon. If you're standing at the front of this property, you're looking out at the west end of Media Elementary School. Um, there is a doorway there. It has, I think, a three steps up to the doorway. And what the owner of the building proposes to do is add an overhang over that existing set of steps, provide some shelter from the rain and the elements. In order for them to do that, they need to enter into a right of way agreement with the borough because that the set of steps and where the porch will be is uh, within the borough's right of way. The proposed porch will not extend any deeper into the into the uh, sidewalk than the existing steps up. But uh, by having this type of an agreement, it permits the borough, if the, if the borough uh, needs to make some change under the sidewalk, it is the responsibility of the homeowner to remove the, the porch. So it gives us some protection. It means that uh, we are not legally responsible for uh, removing that porch if there is need to remove that porch. It is the property owner's responsibility. So I move that we enter into the right of way agreement for the entrance overhang of 18 South Monroe Street. Is there a second to the motion? Second. The motion is made and seconded for, for the borough to enter into a right of way agreement for the entrance overhang with that of the property owners of 18 <coughs> South Monroe Street. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. All right, the fifth item is a, a motion to authorize our solicitor to draft a zoning ordinance amendment that will allow what we have termed here shared parking in residential zoning districts. Uh, this motion is to permit our, or to direct our, our solicitor to draft an ordinance, not for us to adopt it tonight, but uh, just so we have some words on paper that we can then consider. The idea here is something that we've been talking about for some time. Uh, there is, um, uh, at present, we do not permit shared driveways in Media Borough. If you take a look around the borough, you'll find plenty of examples of shared driveways, but for, I think, the past about 10 years or so, we have not permitted them. Um, we have learned over the past 10 years that uh, it does make sense to have shared driveways in, on some properties. 
because it makes it gives us another tool in our box that will encourage developers to put parking behind structures as opposed to at the front of structures. Uh, in other words, they can tuck the cars behind uh, houses as opposed to putting them on pads in front of houses. This permits a little bit more flexibility for that. So I'm, I move that we authorize our solicitor to draft uh, an amendment to our zoning ordinance that would permit shared driveways or shared parking in residential zone districts. Been a motion made. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Motion been made and second to authorize the borough solicitor to draft a zoning ordinance uh, amendment to allow shared parking in <coughs> residential zone in residential zones zoning districts. Is there any discussion? Would just like to bring up. Uh, we're not talking about flag lots or flag type of situations already, Mr. Solicitor, or CDC, in which you would use a driveway for a narrow part of properties so that you could then could build on a property that would probably not have access to a roadway? Food for thought. That's not the intent. Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. I think I'll put it on my checklist and think about it. Motion has been made and seconded. There has been a discussion. All those in favor of authorizing the Spur of Solicitor to draft the ordinance, allowing for shared parking in residential zone <coughs> districts, please say aye. 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 Those say nay. Ayes have it. Uh, the sixth item is more of an informational item. Um, it, it, it involves the uh, property that I guess people have commonly referred to as the Wawa project, uh, the uh, proposal to develop a Wawa convenience store and fueling station at uh, the intersection of Providence Road and Baltimore Avenue. Um, this goes back a little bit in time. Back in November, this past November, council <coughs> voted on the plan for that project. And uh, in connection with voting that, on that plan, we uh, required that the applicant meet 33 conditions and five waivers. The applicant agreed to almost all of the conditions, uh, with the exception of two. Um, the, uh, uh, the conditions that it did not agree to uh, were the, the um, entry, uh, entering into uh, a, uh, a lease agreement or with uh, the borough and, and, and the Wawa Corporation for use of Baker Street. And the other condition, was the uh, setting aside or paying two hundred ninety thousand dollars towards certain traffic improvements, either making the traffic improvements or paying two hundred ninety thousand dollars to uh, to pay for those traffic improvements. The traffic improvement essentially was a second left-hand turn lane southbound on Providence Road, uh, as, as in order to reduce the queue of cars that uh, typically backs up during. Um, during the rush hour uh, of cars trying to turn left onto Baltimore Avenue from Providence Road. Uh, that $290,000 figure was something that was agreed upon by our traffic engineer as well as by uh, the, uh, the applicant's traffic engineer, both in terms of the cost and in terms of it being the most effective way of relieving that type of congestion at that intersection. Um, after we made our vote in November, the applicant, Media Real Estate, uh, I filed uh, an appeal of those two conditions <coughs> with the court. And since that time, they have made an offer to the borough to resolve that appeal. And the terms of the offer were that they would pay the borough $35,000 and essentially swap land for uh, Baker Street. Uh, those of you familiar with that area know that directly across from Tiny Tees, there is a parcel of land on which nothing sits and the proposal was to swap that land for Baker Street. Uh, council met a couple of weeks ago to discuss this offer, and uh, we have decided not to accept that offer, um, and uh, that's where things stand. Um, we have rejected the offer, and uh, uh, the applicant can now choose to continue to pursue its uh, legal remedies with the court, or, or uh, uh, potentially doing something else we don't know. Um, we have responded to their offer, and uh, that's where things currently stand. Um, well, I think maybe you want to ratify that. Oh, that's right. I, I, I apologize. <coughs> yeah, uh, 
to our solicitor is correct. That is a, a decision we be reached in executive session, and now is our time to ratify that. So um, I make that in the form of a motion that we ratify uh, our response to the offer that was made by Media Real Estate with regard to the Wawa project, which is uh, $35,000 and a land swap um, in, exchange, uh, uh, in exchange for uh, the use of, the, of, of Baker <coughs> Street. And I make that in the form of a motion. I'll second that motion. So the motion is remain seconded. Just, just to clarify, we're voting in favor of rejecting an offer. Just right. It's a double This motion will be in, to reject. So an I vote would mean we reject. Yes. Just to be clear. Correct. This motion is that is that we reject the offer by Media Real Estate to swap to to provide thirty five thousand dollars in a land swap for the parcel <coughs> owned by the borough. Uh, that is part of the original application by Media Real Estate, commonly known as the Wawa Project. Is that good enough, Mr. Slicer? Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay. All right, all those uh, in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Just so folks, I think sometimes you get a little bit technical with these things, but we, we kind of have to because uh, they deal with legal matters. Um, and essentially, what, what we, well, our position was back in November that in order for this project, uh, in order for this project to be approved, a certain amount of money, two hundred ninety thousand dollars, or the improvement themselves to the roadway needed to be done, and there needed to be an agreement entered into with regard to Baker Street. Um, that was not accepted by the applicant. Instead, the applicant offered $35,000 and uh, a, a land swap. Um, we have rejected that offer this evening. Um, another informational item. Last month I mentioned uh, with regard to the 3rd Street Dam project that uh, there would be a meeting in front of the judge here in Delaware County, the trial court. Uh, that meeting was held a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the upshot is that the judge would like to have the parties back at the beginning of May. I don't recall the exact date. Uh, the judge wanted the parties to see whether or not there was some common ground upon which they could reach some type of resolution. I have nothing to report on that at the present time, only to say that uh, there is a, another court event scheduled for the beginning of May, and perhaps at the May meeting I'll have something more substantive to report. I have a couple of uh, announcements, not to announce so much as acknowledgements. This past weekend, a uh, number of media residents, including some members of council and uh, some uh, folks who are sitting directly to the right of us, uh, Joanne Tipping and her, and her husband, uh, came out over this past Saturday and we uh, cleaned up and greened up the borough property. We were out there for several hours, uh, raking leaves, picking up uh, uh, things that the winter had left behind, and I think that the property looks much, much better. Um, congratulations to all who participated. Um, I'd also like uh, to acknowledge uh, the event a couple of weekends ago at Media Elementary School. Uh, as of um, this April, Media Elementary School, the building, is 100 years old. And there was a wonderful event that was held at the school to acknowledge those 100 years. And it was really heartwarming to see the number of persons who came out and the amount of passion they have for that school. Sarah was there, and I think that we, we both, the, the amount of emotion that was in that room was palpable. Uh, we wish them 100 more years. Um, I would like uh, to uh, just reflect a moment on uh, a significant event in the school's recent past. Now I think we all acknowledge that the school is one of the jewels of media. It is one of the community meeting uh, meet, uh, meeting points. It's a place that uh, many people come to media precisely because of Media Elementary School. It's a wonderful facility. It wasn't so long ago, and the mayor, I know that you have very uh, clear memories of this. It wasn't so long ago, about 25 years, that school was slated to be closed. It was slated to be closed three times. The last Save Our School was 1992, 
through 93. Um, and that's when the, the school board decided to, instead of moving to Sprinton Lake or wherever, that they put the, put the money in to rehab the building. And just as an observation of how tenuous history can be, it was the efforts of many in this community to help change that decision to keep the school here. One can imagine what this town would look would be if we did not have that school here. I think it would be a, a significantly poorer place. So I'd like to acknowledge those people who fought that fight and kept that school here in media because they had the vision to see what this community was and could be. And I think that we are the better for it. Um, there was a wonderful timeline that was put, uh, that was uh, created by, uh, uh, by um, uh, teachers and others at the school, and it documented those 100 years. And, and there was a wonderful quote there. It came from the early 1990s, and let's see if somebody here re uh, recalls it, that the, that the school was, uh, that, that the school issue then was not simply about the closure of the school, it was about losing a significant part of this community. And I hope you recognize those words, Mr. Mayor. Maybe you, maybe you don't. But uh, there were those who recognized how important that, that school was for the community. And it's because they fought that fight that it still is here. So congratulations, Media Elementary. Let's hope to see you here another 100 years. And in that, in that vein, um, Maura McConnell is a, a photographer here in media. She devoted her time. And uh, she has. Uh, uh, she devoted her time, and she risked her life, actually. <laughs> I don't know if anyone if you can see this. This is a picture of Media Elementary School facing east, and you can see Baral Field above that. And yes, indeed, those are students and teachers out there in the field forming the number 100. The photograph was taken from a helicopter, uh, and uh, Moore was in that helicopter taking this shot. The reason I mention this is because this photograph is available. You can contact the school. It could cost $20, and the $20 goes towards the school. So it's a wonderful way of showing your support for the school and getting a wonderful picture to boot. All right, I've said enough. That's great. Um, Back to you, Mr. President. Okay. Let's move on then. We are now at uh, Finance, Technology, Library, and Environmental Council. <coughs> Thank you, President Hall. Um, relatively light agenda compared to you guys, but uh, let's get started. Number one is payment of bills for the month of March. Uh, I'd like to ask Pro Council to make a motion to approve payment of bills for March in the following amounts. General fund, $229,548.98. Recreation fund, $1,415.17. No funds from liquid fuels, $109.85 from capital fund. That's a little month there. For a grand total of two hundred thirty-one thousand seventy-four dollars and no cents. So moved. Right, there's a motion for payment of our March bill. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> I'll call the question. All those in favor of payment of the bills from the General Recreation Capital Funds, as outlined by Councilman Davidson, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. Motion passes. Thank you. Next up is a uh, discussion workshop that the, the Happiness Week event occurring on April 22nd. Uh, they requested a donation. They gave us a budget, and I believe Council uh, agreed to the amount of $800 to donate to the Transition Town and Happiness Week uh, project. So I therefore make a motion that we approve the donation of $800 to Transition Town Meeting. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Is there a discussion on the motion? Here we go, call for discussion. All those in favor of ratifying the $800 donation to Transition Town Media for purposes of funding Happy Week or Happiness Week activities, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes, and yes, indeed, there is a price to be paid for happiness. <laughs> <laughs> It's getting late in the evening. This it is. is it is. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty cheap. That was good. $800 for happiness, I'd pay it. Okay, so uh, next up is a change. Uh, it's an addendum for Capella Design and Planning. This is coming out of finance because we've received uh, some of the costs associated with the uh, This is the Houghton Street, sorry, the Houghton Park project, which has uh, been going on for the last year and a half. 
And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, it's seven thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Seventy one, up to seventy one. Okay, so this is a change to the contract with the power design. Uh, there were some additional costs with Bob's work on the stormwater aspect of the project. Correct, based on the uh, plan review comments from Upper Providence Township Engineer. Thank you. Um, and so this is a, a change in the total cost of this project for an additional seventy-one fifty for the power design. So I make that in the form of a motion. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of approving the change order uh, with regard to the uh, Whitman Park design, uh, $7,150 seven to the power design and planning, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next up, is I was had the pleasure of meeting a Mr. Gregory Krakevich, for those who are wondering how to spell it, pronounce his name, uh, at uh, the last EAC meeting. I just want to give some highlights. Uh, this, I've never seen a more qualified candidate. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that, but he's an exceptionally well qualified candidate, a graduate of Penn, went to Rutgers for grad school. He is currently employed at the DDRPC, which is the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. He's the manager of the Office of Transit, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Planning. For those who have known me the last three years, I am uh, emphatic about getting a bike lane to solve somewhere in media, so I'm ecstatic that he has joined the EAC. And I would ask Council to approve his appointment to the EAC um, as in the form of a motion. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? There we no call for, discu uh, for, for discussion. All those who favor, favor the appointment of Gregory Kevich to the unexpired term on the EAC. It expires on December 31, 2016. Please say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Yeah, it took a while. Um, okay, next up, I have a couple things that are not on the uh, written agenda tonight that I'd like to talk about. One is obviously parking in town. As you know, the mayor has been working diligently with local banks and other <coughs> owners of local parking lots. Uh, this was not discussed at workshop, but I'm hoping that we can consider it now. Um, and that is, there is a minor increase to our insurance policy, amount of $2,500, $2, in order to insure uh, cars and any damage that might occur to cars, I believe, not the actual cars, but any events that happen on parking lots when we approve the use of our uh, non borough owned properties for parking during events and what have you. So I would ask that the council approve an increase of $2,500 to our insurance to allow the mayor to negotiate and find additional parking within the town for after hours and weekends. Is a motion made? Is there a second on the motion? Second. There is a second. Any discussion on the motion? Just trying to get clarification. What we're voting on is just appropriating funds to increase our insurance costs. Sure. Premium to cover. That's all. It's just that's it. Authorizing. All right. Is there any other call for discussion? So um, we are increasing the premium premium cost because it will it will allow us to use non borough so like a good example. It was a good a bank. Say a bank. Say a bank. So there's a bank right right, right next to Trader Joe's. I don't know. Every time I go by there, it's empty. <coughs> the parking lot is next to it's full. <coughs> this will allow us to set up a contract with that bank saying 5 p.m. until 9 a.m. every night, we won't allow residents to park in your lot. Okay. And it lets us cover whatever liabilities we might have if anything occurs at nighttime so that we're, we can work out. And I think for that, that cost, and I think for the additional parking we'll get, I believe it's well worth it, but that is my opinion. All right, any other call for discussion? I just want to make a point of clarification. This is nothing more than appropriating the funds. There still needs to be policy set up yes. procedures set up with regards to the use of private property. Correct. So it's not a carte blanche to go no. No. have people no. park with no. the no. This, this is sort of the, the starting point to basically yeah. actually. Exactly. There's a lot of work between now and the time that we implement. Uh, yeah, before the proper committee. And I believe Bob will be putting together a, yeah. a plan with policies. And so the point is that uh, it doesn't make sense for the mayor to do that type of work and negotiate with businesses for use of parking if we don't have 
the insurance to cover uh, that parking. It, it, that, it, it, we don't have insurance to cover that, that extension of the parking. So, uh, all right, any other call for, call for discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of appropriating $2,500 uh, for uh, uh, to increase the uh, the extent of our uh, our liability insurance to cover parking um, in private properties during events. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, that ends, I believe, all my legislative action. Uh, I do have a few announcements. Um, Environmental Advisory Council uh, recently went on a recycling tour. For those of you who recycle, and I do every week, usually a bucket or two, uh, they were wondering where the recycling goes. I unfortunately had the flu and was unable to go to the event, but I did see photos and did see, uh, did get the feedback from the EAC. Uh, and the big news is, for those of you who like to recycle bowling balls, apparently <laughs> that is the biggest problem they have at recycling facilities. So do not recycle your bowling balls. If they're not recyclable, I would donate them to a local charity. That, I, I kid you not, apparently went on and on about bowling balls. <coughs> we sent a group of people to go find out if you can't recycle bowling balls. No, I got more, so hold on. So, uh, some other things just to inform people, because again, I get a lot, after I, this sort of happened, I get people say, well, so can I recycle this, can I recycle that? Uh, here's things you cannot recycle, unfortunately. Plastic knives and spoons, they just throw those straight away. Do not, if you buy them and thinking they're recyclable and you're being environmental, they don't get recycled. Uh, second, plastic bottle caps. Apparently, the only way they get recycled is if you stick them on the bottle and then recycle it that way. If they come off the bottle, they're separate, they just throw them away, they cannot deal with them. The machinery cannot deal with it. Uh, something interesting I didn't realize, uh, milk cartons. Uh, and also soup containers, like, like you get, say, Trader Joe's and have soup, those are recyclable. I thought they weren't. Uh, apparently they are. You mean paper milk cartons? The, the, the ones that are sort of have got the Black metal silver. lining? Yes, they are recyclable. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, so that's basically it. Uh, they, they sort of learned about how recycling happens. Uh, like, number one, plastic gets turned into carpeting, apparently. Uh, number three, through six, actually apparently are not recycled at all, but they are encouraging people to continue to recycle them until they find a buyer for those. Um, anyway, that's all they knew. It was basically a great event. Uh, I believe former councilman Eric Stein was there with some other of his professors, as well as all of the EAC representatives. So it was a good event. I wish I could have gone, but again, covered through the flu. Uh, other news for the EAC, there will be a shredding event May 17th. This is for borough residents. Uh, anyone who has any confidential recycling at home that they want to have shredded, uh, I personally have a huge bucket full I'm going to bring over. It's May 17th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and that is at the borough complex. I believe it will either be in the <coughs> back parking lot or right near the front. Can you bring the bowling ball? Can you bring your bowling balls? Uh, bowling balls at home. And I just want to repeat, there is a CRC cleanup event which was also said by um, Councilman Boyer on May 3rd. Uh, and one final announcement, the 3rd Street Project next meeting, for those who are interested, is May 9th at 9.30 a.m. in courtroom number 10, if you're interested in attending that, uh, the exact date. And that is all I have to, I have no news for the library and uh, finance I think we covered, so that's the end of my report. All right, are there any questions for Councilman David? Hearing none, we'll move on to Farmer's Market, Fair Trade, and Shady Tree. Councilwoman Amy Johnson. Thanks. That the, the rotary pancake breakfast last Saturday was a big success. Um, they wanted to me to remind everyone uh, about their fair trade song. Um, that you can participate in singing, and you can find that information on their website. They'll also be present for Happiness Week on the Plum Street Mall on Saturday, April 26, uh, preparing some fair trade goodies. Um, Shade Tree, there was a drive around on April 7th, which was a very wet and rainy day, so not, not every uh, area was able to be covered. Um, but for requests of properties committee, there, a walk around has been scheduled on the Barrow Hall property uh, to look at landscaping, plantings that might need to be replaced and possibly thinned out. So that is to still happen. Um, farmer's Market, um, big day, May 8th is the opening day, um, 
So that'll be a busy and exciting week also with the opening of Diving Under the Stars. Um, there will be a big celebration on the opening day, not only celebrating the beginning of market season, but also because this is the market's fifth year. Uh, so they'll, on the opening day, there'll be food with Desert Rose and 320 Market. There'll be live music, many activity plans for kids. Um, the mayor will be there to celebrate the opening with us, assisting in an honorary planting of vegetables and herbs. I'll be helping. Don't worry. Right. Yes, I'll be there to help you and assist you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be your backup. You um, something neat that the market does is they have produce passports, so the kids are introduced to a new fruit or vegetable each week, um, and then when their passport is full, they win tokens to be spent at the market. So just a great way to introduce kids to local seasonal food. Um, there's a full line of vendors for this season offering an array of locally grown and made goods. There'll be vegetables, fruit, dairy, meats, there'll be ice cream. There's even going to be a monthly vendor who will be sharpening tools and knives. And um, Plastic or? No. <laughs> so we're hoping that our local restaurants will take advantage of this for their kitchen utensils. So we're going to make sure that um, that's advertised to the uh, restaurants. Um, and um, so, like I've said in previous meetings, the market season will be an ongoing celebration, celebrating its five years. So every week is basically going to be a big party. Um, and I, the, the, if you go on the media website, uh, media farmers market website, you can get a line up with on. There's a calendar where you can see what's happening each week. Um, so market calendars three to seven every Thursday, starting May eighth on the corner of State and Gale. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Council and Amy Johnson? Hearing none, we'll move on to Public Relations and Historical Archives. Councilwoman Dixon. Yes, uh, we've been getting, media's been getting an awful lot of really good publicity. <coughs> and it's no, not from me, but the mayor has been very good in promoting media, thank goodness. Um, the um, historical archives had a meeting just the 20th, and um, uh, someone from the library, Tammy from the mayor's and from the library was there, and we're working, they're working really, it's a terrific group, working hard on doing all kinds of measurings, trying to figure out whether they should get things back to, not back to, but to other areas like Chester, because really, it's better for their archives than ours. And, um, and looking at how we can get, continue to at least work part time here with the year when um, everything is moved. Um, so they're doing a wonderful job. They're also going after, as was mentioned in the, uh, the meeting before, a grant. And next week, they've got a lot of things that need to be going on. So I have one little uh, motion, and that is that we ratify the submission of the Historical Archives grant application. All right, the motion's been made. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I will call the question. All those in favor of ratifying the submission of the Historical Archives grant application, that one little motion, um, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Anything else for us? No. Any questions for Councilman Dixon? <coughs> Hearing none, we are at that uh, welcome point of our agenda where we have our second public comment and privilege before. Is there anyone present who wishes to address Council at this time? <laughs> Briefly. <laughs> Briefly, yes. I'm sorry. Bob Diamond, 134 East 3rd Street. Uh, two quick things. I believe somebody was here earlier talking about Happiness Week. Yeah. Uh, and I was late because I was rehearsing being happy. So. I'm trying. Um, I'm going to make a fool out of myself all week. Uh, but the other thing is, on uh, you talked about cleanup. On Saturday, um, the 26th, April 26th, Glen Providence Park is going to be a cleanup from 9 to 12, uh, headed by Rotary. 
uh, Boy Scouts, and so if you care to join in, we'll be there from 9 to 12. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we awfully clean park? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, there's no one else who is present, so uh, I think at this point oh, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. <coughs> Thank you, folks. Good night.